Hello, Sasha. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Thanks, Miriam. Uh, how are you doing? I'm doing just fine. Um, I'm, I'm going to ask you the first question. Okay. okay. What would young lesbians like for us older ones to do to help you out? I am averse to, to saying, well, I've lived longer, so I know everything. What I am asking you is, what do you think we can do in terms of working with you? What would you like us to do? Well, first of all, I just to clarify, I'm not a lesbian. Uh, I'm, but I will do my best to answer having talked to lesbians. I, um, I've interviewed many lesbians on my podcast. And um, in particular, one that's coming to mind is a really young lesbian I talked to, she was only 15. And um, what she talked about really struck me that there's still so much just conservative homophobia for her. And she's actually in Australia and she said in a sort of a conservative community there. And she um, isn't really out to most people she knows. And she feels like there's people don't really understand that it's still quite hard, even in the old fashioned sense, just to come out as a lesbian. And then on top of it, there's this transgender ideology where she's being told that if she doesn't accept uh, trans women, AKA males into her dating pool, that she's some kind of a bigot. And um, I don't know, I think that's, that was what she wanted uh, people to know about. Okay. As a young feminist, what would you like from us Alta Cockers? Well, gosh, um, I think just to really understand that we actually are here. Like, we, we actually want to be a part of it. I mean, there unfortunately, there are so many other women my age who are these really, really liberal feminists. And by that, I mean you know, sort of pop feminism, mainstream. They think trans women are women and they think sex work is empowering. <laughs> so I don't know, I guess I guess we should really talk about like, we should really take young women seriously and hold them to a really high standard and say, hey, it's actually not cute to be, to act dumb and to think that these ridiculous demeaning things are empowering. So I don't know if that's a good answer, but. That is a that good, is a good I see I that definitely. Mm -hmm. What do you think of uh, of the the age dichotomy right now in feminism? I need to be able to understand exactly why there are so many handmaidens, that there are so many women who are willing to sell out their sisters to accommodate the feelings of men who wear dresses as a woman. Mm -hmm. um, I try to have patience. But I'm a, I'm I'm a perf and I'm a turf. Okay, I don't I don't hate trans people and I'm certainly not afraid of them. Okay, so I'm not transphobic. But I don't want them in my spaces. I believe that women are entitled to a space of their own. That we are entitled to have civil rights as do children. We are entitled to have our single sex spaces if we so desire. We are entitled to exist if we so choose, without penis, okay? They can live as they wish, but I will not be forced to lie. I will not be forced to use language that I know is artificial and betrays trust. Um, I will not allow my code of ethics to be compromised merely because somebody insists upon an absolute impossibility, which is, oh yeah, I changed my sex. No, gender is artificial, sex is reality. Right. Yeah. And everything kind of hinges on that, right? Like that trans women are men. I mean, if we can't, if we lose that battleground, we lose, we can't really make the arguments, right? Do you see it that way? I, I do. And, and what needs from my, the reason I asked, what would you like us to do? Because I know, I know what I think should be done. Okay. But I'm more confrontational and I'm more of a, Jack Tictatious woman. I think we need a lot of people to be public, to stand up and speak out. When you have one here, Sasha, and then another one over here, okay, that's one here, one there, and, and they are at risk. 
But if we could always get several hundred women to protest whenever one of these people stands up and whines about something, might start telling people something. When there are school districts that insist upon, you know, teaching gender studies to kids and that they're born in the wrong body, we had parents who would stand up and say, you know, knock it off. This is balderdash and be public about it. Things would change. Um, I understand people's concerns about conservative people, yet I have worked with conservative women um, day in and day out, and we have our limits. We know where we agree, we know where we disagree, okay? And we, we know where we have common ground. So we work together on common ground, and I have to say that not once have I ever had a conservative woman with whom, woman with whom I worked treat me any other way except with respect. And I think there's something to it. Education took place on both sides. I'm not the lavender menace, and they're not going to be the ones to try to convert this Jew to Christianity. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how to tell you this because I understand you have a job. I understand you have, you have to live in your community. But these bullies will not stop unless all of us stand together and say, not only enough, but then do something about it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, the job thing is so many people are scared to speak just for just to lose their job. I don't know if you know, but I was fired for my tweets for my when they were accused of transphobia. And it was, you know, the normal the normal sort of turfy tweets about how I was criticizing they them pronouns and saying that doesn't actually fix sexism. It just entrenches it. And uh, or gender roles, but um, yeah, Where, exactly. They know they can come off to your job, so they shut women up that way. Where were you working? I was working at a literary agency, and I had just started. It was um, I had only been working there for one month, and um, then yeah. <laughs> your private tweets. Yeah, it was. You're, so yeah. you're not allowed freedom of speech. Right. That's that was really for me the the bottom line. I got into the discussion because of gender and feminism and then it turned out to be all about freedom of speech because that's really the pro the the issue the problem here well one of the nice things that that could be done after the fact is do you have a job now well i am sort of now i'm doing something a bit entrepreneurial i've started an organization called Plebity and um, we do we do interviews and shows and then we also have a free speech fund which we started after I got fired to give grants to people who get fired or, or who suffer some kind of consequences for their speech. So, so I'm you should, trying to make it on my own now. So you should let us all know what literary agency this was so we can make sure that people oh, yeah. get their discriminatory, um, they don't support freedom of speech and they're a cancellation thing. See, getting the word out publicly and on the internet, you know, via social media is an important thing. Hmm. People, you know, oh, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that. Well, you know, every time something like this happens, if we nail the corporation and spread the word, spread the word, spread the word, you know, I think things will change. It, yeah. We got to stop being nice. Yeah. Okay? I'm not yeah. mm -hmm. And, you know, I completely agree that we have to counterbalance the, the woke mob or the, you know, gender ideology mob. And my agency was the Tobias Literary Agency, so go ahead and Google them or whatever. But, um, yeah, because we have to let these employers know that they can't get away with doing this. So I think we're supposed to ask each other about the feminist item we are wearing. <laughs> oh, well, I'm wearing a T-shirt that says... Thought criminal because that's exactly what I am. I, I don't like transgenderism. I don't think that men can be women or women can be men. And were I allowed to use some vulgarity, which I will not, they can take their pronouns and show them. Nice. I'm wearing a woman, adult, human, female T-shirt. So that's very simple. I mean, thanks Posey Parker. She makes these, and uh, the definition of woman is an adult, human, female. And that's not bigoted, it's just a fact. <laughs> it's actually offensive to claim otherwise. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I just, uh, I, I, I just, I'm not gonna lie. 
I've, I've got a, a t-shirt by a woman in Great Britain uh, that says I'd, I'd rather, rather, rather be vulgar or I'd rather be rude than a liar. And yeah. That's how I feel. I think that's a quote from, do you know Magdalene Burns? Yeah, that's, she said it, yes. Yeah. This yeah. happens every now and again. I had her name in my head, but it's like, yeah. yeah, she was really great. She was definitely an inspiration to me. And I used to watch all her videos and I had no idea that someday I would also be like putting my face out there. But um, yeah. <laughs> so how do you propose, um, young sister, that, that we, we work together and how can we assist people uh, in, in being able to be out? You know, what, what do we need to do to enhance our visibility and get our word out? What do we need to do? Well, I think that sometimes we get a little stuck in the rut of purity around radical feminism. <laughs> I do notice that. And it's like, you know, some women will use preferred pronouns. I do sometimes. I think it's useful in certain conversations. And I think people shut down if you, if you, I, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm someone who's a fan of using rhetoric in a, in a manipulative way. No, I don't mean that in a, in an evil way, like conniving manipulative, but in an effective way. So I don't think we should come after each other for you know, purity, like we can disagree within the movement and then it will grow more. That's one of the thoughts I've been having. What do you think about that? I, if somebody wants to do that, it's fine. I, I, I really don't care about purity. It, it means mm -hmm. nothing to me. You know, one, one, woman, one, one woman's sandwich is another woman's, I won't eat it because I'm a vegetarian. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, exactly. What I wish we could do is, is get young feminists together with elders and in terms of fighting things back, I wish we could develop a war chest. You know, um, I'm not sure which organization would oversee it. But if a million women gave one buck to the war chest, that's a million dollars. We would then have a way to assist people who've been canceled, who've been fired, okay, to fight back and do what they need to do. And I think that's one thing that nobody has thought about and it's something that, that I wonder about all the time. Well, it's really, it's funny because you're describing my project, actually. So that's so exciting for me to hear. That's exactly what we're doing. I mean, it's not necessarily $1. You can donate $1. We would absolutely accept it. But um, give a dollar. Yeah, I think it's a great thing if you, you know, whatever you can afford. So we have a Patreon and maybe the organizers can link this somewhere. But yeah, we're raising money for exactly that. And we've just started this year, but we've given one grant so far to a French feminist named Marguerite Stern and she's a radical feminist who's out there in the streets and uh, on International Women's Day this year she trans activists attacked her group and threw an egg in her face there's a video of it it's kind of horrible to see but um we that's what we're trying to do so I completely agree and that's that's exactly what I'm trying to build actually at plevity.org yeah what do you think has changed? I mean, obviously a lot has changed, but I'm really curious from your perspective, how how different is the landscape now from previous decades in terms of feminism? I came out in, uh, oh, gosh, what, 1973, 1974. That's a long time ago. You probably were not even a sparkle in your mama's eye then. Mm -hmm. um, the difficulties then were police departments and, 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 and general homophobia. I, I got to tell you that there was no such thing as trans men or trans women back in those days. There were a few transsexuals, and I differentiate between the two, um, but not very many. Um, the police used to harass us a lot. Uh, it was not always very pleasant. Um, there were, there were more lesbian bars and a lot of them were mafia owned. So one had to be careful about things. Then the civil rights marches started and we saw greater acceptance. Um, what stymies me yet still, and it's something that I, I don't know how to account for it, except that 
we are women and women are not seen as being worth very much in this society is that lesbians still don't get their just due. It enrages me to hear some of these, these troons out there insist that it was a trans woman who started Stonewall. Balderdash, Codswallow, it was a lesbian. Lesbians seem not to be given their, their just due, their, their just place in our history and society. Um, I went to court when I was in the army, won once and lost once. Historically, I am the first gay or lesbian person to be reinstated into the military. And for a long time, I was the only one serving that they would acknowledge, of course, okay? <clears throat> Yet everybody looks at men, okay, or officers. And they don't take into account that it was a Jewish lesbian from the state of Wisconsin that did it first. I don't care about me. I really don't give a damn either way. But it's just I am tired of not seeing women and lesbians get their just due, their just acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. And that hasn't changed. Um, back then, there was an LGB community. Um, people did work together. Um, there were organizations. There was Gay People's Union in Milwaukee. Um, there were there were there were plenty of organizations where men and women at least did work together to try and further civil rights. Today everything is true and true and true, trans, trans, trans. Really? You know, I'm not queer. I'm a lesbian. I am a radical feminist. Don't 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 ply my mind with all of this other stuff. Hmm. Do you think um Okay, so we have a, we have some advice to ask each other how we first got involved in feminism. So Miriam, I am really curious about you. How did you first get involved? In, was it was it through your experience in the military or not? Um, no, not really. It happened. To, I was getting a, a I was going to university, getting a bachelor's degree. Okay. And um, there were feminists. We really had a lot back in the day. We had our own place. You know, we had bookstores and everything else. And I'm, I'm not stupid. And I understand sexism. So it was experiencing sexism and discrimination as a female in this society that got me involved in feminism. Um, you need to also understand that back in the day, um, lesbians weren't exactly all welcome either, except that we did all the work for the most part. Um, but I, I didn't like being discriminated against. I didn't like the idea that some men could think they could put me in my place. And that's how I got involved, because I'm, I'm uppity. You know, I'm a curmudgeon. I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's as good a reason as any. Um, you tell me, tell me what happened to you. Well, I, um, I was also in college getting my bachelor's degree, and I had, I had always been very suspicious of this liberal mainstream feminism. I kind of always just sensed that it was bullshit and it was just very unsatisfying, you know, because when I was growing up in, in high school, it was like, we'd have Taylor Swift out here saying quotes like, feminism is, it's about equality, nothing more, nothing less. It's not about angry women. It's not about picketing. It's not about rioting. And that one really got under my skin because if it's not about picketing, then how do you think the suffragettes got anywhere? So it was just this meaningless drivel. And then when I was, I think 19, I came across Gail Dines on YouTube and she's a, either a Marxist or a radical feminist. And she's um, she really covers pornography. And um, so that was like, oh, this is, this is an atrocity happening that nobody's talking about. It was because porn is so normalized it really among my generation. And, you know, really abusive stuff. People people don't necessarily understand. If they don't know, they don't understand. Like, we're not just talking about, like, whatever you think of Playboy or something. We're talking about really abusive, exploitative stuff. Really overtly misogynistic. And it's really bad for, for young women growing up in this culture. And um, so that was, what, that was what initially got me. That, that's when I learned about radical feminism from Gail Dines. I, I feel so protective of young women like you. I mean, I just, I, w I wanna, 
not stand in front of you because I want to be in front, but it's like, you're not going to hurt them. Bring it on. Yeah. You understand what I mean? Yeah. I, 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 I have lots and lots of friends internationally and I, I hear the stories about how young women are supposed to be treated and what goes on whenever I hear about sex work is empowering or whatever. I say, why don't we invite men to do it? Yeah. You know, if it's, it's that, empowering. tell them, hey, here's a job for you. You don't, you're not working? Exactly. They never answer. Right. Yeah, and you know, like I'm, I'm not the one to think of this, but it's the fir it's the only career where more experience means you do worse in your career. Yeah. So what kind of a career is that? And I mean, it just it puts a lie. It's a shameful lie that it's a normal job. That it's an okay job to have. Um, have you heard of OnlyFans? Which? Because it's called OnlyFans. It's a very disturbing new trend that's happening now among very young women. And they're, it's kind of like homemade porn and the men can pay them directly. And it's so, I mean, some people have described it as like grooming an entire generation of women to go to use this app. It's an app. And you know how my generation is always on our apps. So yeah, it's, 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 a, new, it's a new disturbing trend. And it's kind of funny because I feel like that protective about those young women who are younger than me now who are involved in that. They do it for the money? Yeah, and I think... They understand gonna, what they are doing? I think that they... I think it's been romanticized. I think it's been glamorized by the culture, by like pop music, movies... And they don't know what's kind of waiting on the other side of that. Boy, I talk about a generation gap. I had no idea. It's I, a new. It's a new phenomenon. The idea that young lesbians should become trans men. My, my partner is interjecting a comment. Okay. Here. okay. The idea that young lesbians should become trans men. Yeah. She's talking about pornography. I know. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't get it. I, why, boy, it, it's going to come back to bite you in the butt really badly. Mm. Nothing on the internet really goes away. Right, right. You know, you're going to want to get a job working for the State Department, and somebody's going to come up and say, uh, "Do you remember doing this?" Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't know what they're thinking. I really don't. It's very, very disturbing. I mean. Do they need money that badly? Some of them do, and some of, and I mean, yeah, like it's really hard to get a job now. Like I think half my generation is living with our parents at the moment, and that's really I, strange. There, there are a lot, a lot of jobs in 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 the restaurant and hospitality industry here in in, in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Jobs, like people are crying for employees, yeah. offering good wages and stuff. And these girls think that this is the easy way out. You know what I mean? They're being told that this is easy. So I think it is a form of grooming in a way because they're being told like, oh, it's fun and it's kind of glamorous and it's easier than a restaurant job or something. It's uh, a lot of brainwashing. Money, I see. Mm -hmm. I, you, you certainly are not, and I, and I would not say it as a caveat for all young people, but it seems to me a lot of them are not precisely motivated to work hard mm -hmm. do you know what i mean yeah i just i get so ticked off when i see people snoring for money on mm -hmm. the internet. hi you know say you want a pizza and maybe some of your cis allies will chip in and buy you a pizza <laughs> really yeah hey, i want a mercedes benz okay i think i'll go online and ask for people to buy me one <laughs> yeah it might work you never know wouldn't consider doing it. No. So, okay, we have another question prompt which says, ask each other what is the hardest part of feminist sisterhood? What do you think, Miriam? You go. Okay. Um, well, the hardest part probably is what we're talking about now, about how a lot of women want to choose these patriarchal paths. And I mean, as much as I critique the lib fem concept of choice, oh, we all just we're choosing it. It's it's all just our our personal choices. Um, 
that a lot of women, well, you said in the beginning, you said the word handmaiden, right? So I guess I could go with that. Why are they going along with this? Why are so many women saying trans women are women? Why is it women who are attacking, you know, me when I got canceled or attacking you? I know women have, have also like yelled at you. I was just watching a video of you giving a talk and there were women screaming at you in the crowd. They don't matter. I think the hardest part of feminist sisterhood is trying to deal with modern lib films. Um, I think also, I don't know how to describe this, but for me, it's sort of like when you don't have very much, whether power or anything else, when you see the crumbs on the top of the table and somebody says you, you can have those, you, you scrabble for them, okay? And I think the infighting is what really bothers me. Um, it's like people are, are, are scrabbling, they're, they're scrapping around to get you know, a shred of power here or there. Um, and they forget about the idea that you don't have to agree with everybody about everything. You know, so we don't agree on X, but we agree on A and B, so we'll work together on A and B. People have forgotten common sense and civility, and I think that's the hardest part. Um, I learned a long time ago that I don't need to be validated by anybody, okay? Um, if somebody insults me, you know what? It just goes right over. You know why? Because that person is not germane to my life, is not important to, in, to my life or to me. It has no influence in my life or on me whatsoever. Why am I going to give that person power and get all upset? Um, about the only thing that really upsets me is when I encounter uh, anti-Semitism. I had a, a, a true tell me to go crawl back in the oven. Thank the universe. I will never meet that man. Because I'd be in jail for assault and battery. Mm -hmm. But you, they can call me names. They can say I'm a, a bitch or another word that rhymes with truck that starts with a C, you know. Um, they can call me. It doesn't bother me. Usually I respond and say, oh, yeah, my secret is out now. Um, but it's the infighting that we forget about civility and forget about the idea of common ground and that we can agree to disagree and, and still work together. Mm -hmm. um, and I and I don't understand why, if we stopped fighting and unified, we'd get a lot further than what we're doing right now. I mean, it, it hurts me when some 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 sisters will say, oh, Miriam, you work with conservatives and you spoke at, at the Heritage Foundation and, and stuff, you know. Yeah, conservative women are women. They're subject to the same sexism and same harassment that we are. You know, we don't agree on this, but we found common ground here. And you know what? I'll keep on working with any woman who shows good faith. And that's that's the hardest part for me is 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 dealing with people as oh you work with this or you work with that. Well, too damn bad. You don't like it? too tough. Yeah. It's been it's been so interesting the left right dichotomy because I always came from the left and then now I'm thinking, well, maybe I'm politically homeless or something, but you um you see this like we have the ACLU, they've gone full um, you know, trans activist. And then you've got the ADF, the Alliance Defending Freedom, this conservative legal organization. They're defending women and girls. Like they're, I interviewed one of their lawyers who's um, taking a case to save girls sports in Connecticut, you know, track team that has boys running on it, pretending they're girls. Um, so yeah, the, the conservative thing. So you've been attacked a lot. I mean, I, I know about the, I've sort of heard about this, like these attacks on women who speak at the Heritage Foundation or stuff like that. Is that ongoing? I, I don't know, not so much anymore. But you know, I, I don't I don't pay attention. Hmm. More more important things to do than to be fussing about that. Some blowhard here said this thing, that thing, or another thing. I, I don't care. Um, 
I, I, I agree with you. I, I'm an independent. I lean left of center, and I once would have described myself as being liberal. But like you, I, I'm, I'm a homeless child. You know, maybe we should start a women's party, you know. Um, yeah. You know, for those of us that are men, and run women for office. Mm -hmm. You know, women who will say, you know, no, we're not going to put up with some of these shenanigans. I just, I, I, I don't have a home politically anymore. And, I, don't, I well, it is what it is. Yeah. Change the world, but I can still work to change my little, my little piece of it. Right. Exactly. With young women like you, I mean, whatever you would ask of me, if I was able to do it, I would. Miriam, I wanted to ask you also about something that happened a few years ago that I was just reading about that you were going to be the grand marshal of a pride parade in Milwaukee and then they canceled you. Yep. Would you mind telling the story? Sure. Um, I was on the internet and I saw this, this human being who refers to itself as it. I am not being rude. Okay, it says it is a dragon. <sighs> Frankly, it, it scared me, and I said, Gosh, you know, how would you feel taking a shower next to this person? What I did not know is that the dragon head in a previous whatever was a trans woman. I had no idea. So I was accused of making transphobic comments, and then they went on my Facebook page. And, like, unless, you know, I, pretty much people can say what they want on my Facebook page short of threatening to eviscerate somebody and yet people will make transphobic remarks as you know or criticisms i don't like the word transphobia um and so they decided that i i should be canceled like like the blowhards and cowards yellow belly car cowards that they are and tell me i had to go find out through a back door and i wrote to them and you know and i emailed them and said well what's going on here and nobody's talked to me well this well that all men white men, okay, complaining about it, and um, I was canceled. Um, well, you know what? If I have to lie and get down on my knees to, to partake in a, in a parade and be somebody, I don't want it. I don't want, the, I don't want power. I don't want that kind of fame. It means nothing if I have to sell my soul, and I won't do it. And so I wrote about it um, in Ruth Barrett's book. And to this day, I won't go to a pride parade. I won't go to pride fest. I won't go to anything else. I did get an award from, the, an award from them um, back in the day. And I'm thinking that if they have a pride, pride fest this year, that on the speaker's page, I may just take that award and come right up and say I'm returning it. Yeah. Because I don't want it. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, I, 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 I'm sort of amazed at their cowardice. Oh yeah, extremely cowardly. Okay, they're afraid of, of 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 a woman who was at that time what sixty seven or sixty eight years old. They wouldn't confront me. Yeah, it reminds me of what they did to J.K. Rowling. Something, but I'm not gonna. Are you sure? <laughs> well. They can edit. They can edit it out, can't they? I think so. Fuck that shit. Fuck that shit. I will say it right along with you. Yeah, no, fuck that shit. And it, it does remind me of what they did to J.K. Rowling because when you she gave back some award, I think uh, some I think she gave back an award, or maybe they revoked the award, but then she basically just gave them the middle finger, um, which is good. We need more women to do that. Yeah, well, I think I will, and if I if if we don't know because of the pandemic if when there will be a pride fest but if when there is one i i will probably put it out on, out of my facebook page and let people know i'm going to do it and i hope that there are a thousand women there just standing in silence when i give it up and then turn around and walk away in silence yeah you know, they're going to cancel us we'll cancel them it would be so great to have a real life action when the pandemic is lessened um so should we talk about trans young trans lesbians that could be an interesting topic as well well i have met any number of them you know who detransitioned and universally i say to them 
Welcome home, sister. We were waiting for you. Glad it didn't take any longer. I I have I, I don't know what else I could possibly say. I will hug them if they will allow me to do so. Um and my heart hurts so much for them. Do you understand what I mean? And I do what I can. I listen. I don't ask questions. I let them tell me. And I will do so as long as I humanly can. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's really heartbreaking. And do you have anything that you would, I guess, say to say to young lesbians right now? Like a message that you would give to them? Yes. Don't listen to the trans community. If you are out there, young Amazon, look for me on Facebook. Look for any number of us on Facebook. We are here and we will support you. Um, there are all kinds of women-only events, you know, for not just for young lesbians, but young women who want to be in, you know, women-only events out there. We will get the word out. You don't stand alone. We're here, but you got to let us know where you are. You know, we, we, I can't very well go house to house and say, do any lesbians live here? You, you tell us and we'll be there. I am here for you anywhere, any place, anytime. Mm -hmm. For you too. It doesn't matter if you're a lesbian or not. You know, if this, this world is too tough for me to, 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 to be considering merely one sexuality yeah yeah i think i mean i hope that you know there are young women listening i know there are young women listening and i hope that they do take that to heart because i will say i think they do feel alone i think in particular lesbians are feeling alone right now um there were some statistics that came out that said that um the trans you know the trans communities has grown a lot more than the lesbian community so you know that's somewhat strange like why would that happen you know and people are just asking questions about it how, how would you know about lesbians because lesbians don't traditionally go around and say oh yeah by the way i'm a big dyke you know do you understand what i mean but troons are out there all the time i'm trans i'm trans i'm trans mm -hmm. i'm trans i'm trans i'm trans i i i i think that probably the number of young Lesbians is pretty steady, but the problem with it is, is the places, the bars, the bookstores, the events and stuff that I had when I came out in 1973 are not there today. So we are having to rebuild a whole framework for young feminist women and young lesbians. Um, and geez, it, it, I, I don't even know where to begin. And I'm just one person. I keep at it and I keep speaking out, but it's it'd be good to get some help. You know what I mean? Yeah, we do. We need more people. And it's like you said earlier, when there's just one person here and one person here, it's it's pretty hard to build a movement or to stand up against these people and they're bullies, you know, the trans movement. There are so many bullies in the movement. That's why I conceal carry. Say that again? That's why I conceal carry. Let's see. Do you know what that means? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, women get so afraid when these people spout off on the on the internet. I, I'll I'll tell you a small secret. If you really want to do harm to somebody, you weren't going to go put it on Facebook. You know, they are counting on the fact that women are going to get frightened or weirded out. You know, by all of these things. I laugh at it. And you know what happens? It works. Being up and he works. In, in 2017, I spoke at a, a gender conference at Madrid, Spain. And I wondered where the pickets were. You know, like, hello, gender conference. The people who put on this conference told me directly that the transgender community decided that they weren't going to do anything because they were afraid I was going to do something. You damn right I would have done something. 
And that's the power of being uppity and saying, I'm not going to take this anymore. Enough is enough. I'm, it isn't that I'm not afraid. There are times when I am. But you know what? I don't let fear control me. And I know when to be afraid and I know what to do when I'm feeling that way. And women need to stop taking these bullies seriously. So you know, what, what do you do when you feel afraid? One old woman, you know, weird out a, a trans community in, in, in Madrid, Spain. I'm uppity. Mm -hmm. But what do you, what do you do when you do feel fear? And how do you advise other women who feel fear in the face of this? It, I can't give you a across the board answer because it depends on the situation. But the first thing I do is pay attention to what my gut tells me. Okay. If I really think that killing might occur, I, I will get out of there, you know, because I will not pull a weapon nor show a weapon unless I intend to use it. And thus far, I haven't shot anybody. You know what I mean? So I will leave if I can. And if I can't leave, I pay attention to my surroundings. I pay attention to what they're doing, and I watch their eyes. Not their body, not their hands. I watch their eyes because their eyes will tell you every time what they're going to do. And, and, and I give them a warning. Don't touch me. I'm going to take a step back. You're violating my space. You know, you come, you touch me. I will consider that my life is in danger, and I will take steps to defend myself. And I give them fair warning. And then I step back because I'm in control. They are not. Mm -hmm. I do not cede control to anybody. But I'm a vet. Right. I'm a drill sergeant. Right. Yeah. And, you know, when you, when you said that, it made me think about how a lot of the trans movement is about eroding our ability as women to do that to stand like even the little ability that we even have collectively as a group to do that obviously some women are more like you some are more timid but it's telling us that we can't that we're bigoted if we stand up for ourselves against men who identify as women you know we hear news stories about that like trans woman isn't trying to enter a woman's bathroom and the woman pushed him out and then it's like oh she's a violent bigot yeah i mean i i think it's so funny uh and that that the, they hear about stuff like that, but they never see the trash and the vulgarity and the vileness that they spew on on social media. I mean, I really do wish there was a way of of getting on, say, you, you know, some of the talk shows uh, during the day. You know, well, you've had trans people on. You presented their case. Now let us show you what our case is. Give us fair, you know, fair time, fair hearing. I mean, even PBS is doing trans, trans, trans. And I wrote to them and said, um, you know, there's a, another side to the coin here. Aren't you obligated to present both viewpoints since you do so in other situations and I haven't heard back from them? Mm -hmm. I, think, I think it's a failure of feminists um, to really stand up in strength and say, no, stop it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And... Um that's another thing is the news coverage. It's so one-sided. And so people who aren't connected in any way to other radical women or just critical women, they feel they think maybe they're going crazy or they think they're, I've heard this from women, I think I'm old fashioned. That one really, it's terrible. It's like, no, you're not old fashioned, you're right. <laughs> I, I think one of the best things about doing what I do is being able to meet young women like you. You do something really rather wonderful, which is you give me faith. You give me enough courage and enough strength to keep on keeping on. Because I know whose shoulders I stand on. I know who my Amazon foremothers are. And so I figure you might be standing on my shoulders one day. And so I have to keep on keeping on. Mm. And, and you, you, you give me faith that, you know, we, we actually may, may get through this. I, I wish I could be around 100 years from now to see what goes on. 
Yeah. Yeah, it would, it will be, I, I think people will look back on this time and just wonder what the hell we were thinking, you know, as a society with transing people and these medical sort of experimental procedures and everything that's going along with it. Oh yeah, you know, society is going to be dealing with it. And this is big pharma, big medicine, big money. You know, they, they, they encourage a social contagion. And then the people that they, they, whose bodies they butcher, whose bodies they poison, are going to have lifelong problems and they're going to make money from that. Yeah. And, uh, and we won't lose an entire generation, but we will lose a lot of an entire generation. And I wonder if people think about what it's going to be like 20 years from now. You know, the wreckage because of this. I, I don't know how else to say it. I don't mean human beings are wreckage, but the, the wrecked bodies, the wreckage of souls and, 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 and potential. Yeah. Wreckage of rights of women. Yeah, the wreckage of rights of women. Yes. Come on, Jenny. You know? I know. We're sliding backwards to places that shouldn't, I mean, we shouldn't be losing these rights. That I know. I know that the women before me fought for us to have sports and to have spaces and all these things. These are being eroded. Just stand up and, and if one of these guys comes in there, they just say, no, we're not going to compete. It's a man. Gender is not biology. There. Exactly. Gender is not biology. He is a biological male. He had, he's, he's, he is, we're not going to do it. You know, if enough women stood up and said, no, we're not going to compete and they, they, you know, let him run his stupid race by himself or whatever, things would change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe that's the answer. Um, we're being told to ask each other what is wonderful about being a woman and then wrap it up. <laughs> Ooh, you're wonderful what's being about. Uh, Thank you. What's wonderful about being a woman, meeting young women like you. You give me faith. You give me courage. You give me heart. I'm speaking for myself. My partner and I are entering our 28th year together, um, knowing that I am loved and that I am also loving is one of the really cool things about being a woman. Um, but pretty much for me, it's being a woman is not a feeling for me. It is a way of existing and I feel that existence every day in every part of my being. I feel that connection to the earth, um, I, especially to trees. I, I really like trees, but it's just that I exist as a woman, as a female human being is, is, is wowzer. Yeah, it's wonderful. I'm just going to shamelessly plagiarize your answer <laughs> and just completely agree. I never want to be a man. I would never want to play at being a man because I really like being me, a female, a woman. Mm -hmm. I think it's the best thing in the world. Yeah, me too. I'm really happy to be a woman, but I'm also really happy that I'm happy to be a woman because I look around and see these other young women rejecting it and it's tragic and heartbreaking and i i on one hand i understand because it's all it's been hard but yeah i think it's wonderful to be a woman yeah i i, I guess being old and old women in this society are not taken much into account we're not seen as sex objects or whatever so i don't have that burden on my shoulders but i once did mm -hmm. um and I don't know how to teach. I, I wish young women like you could tell me, how did you learn this? Can you teach us? Because we need to teach young women that they're absolutely fabulous. They're wonderful. They don't need to do anything to their bodies. They're just, they're, they're just fabulous the way they are. I, I don't understand why you know, they don't love themselves. You can't love somebody else unless you know how to love yourself. You know, I don't mean narcissism. I mean, if I didn't like me very much, I don't know that my partner would have stayed with me, yay, these 27 and some odd years. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I don't know exactly either. I know we, that's the message that we do need to get out. Um, but we have to, I guess, just keep trying and just keep reaching them. Sure. Did that again, you cut out. You and I should do a road show. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Bring your gun. You have to bring your gun, though. I mean, you and I, they may not listen to me because they think I'm old, but they'll start listening to you from the get-go. And when they find out we will have something of value to say, and it's pretty much the same, I, I wonder if things wouldn't change. Yeah. Well, they, I think we should do it. Porn tells these women they need to get groomed, but they don't hear voices, well, I try, you try, telling them, yeah, you're just really great the way you are. What are you doing to yourself? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? And, and, and do these, these trans men, do they really think they're going to get male privilege? Look, what did Mr. Jenner get? Woman of the Year Award, right? What do trans men get? Oh, male gets pregnant. Hello? Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Well, God, I think we should do it, and we should have a lot of other women do it with us, but I think we're supposed to wrap up now. So, Miriam, thank you so much. This was wonderful to get to talk to you and I really enjoyed it. I'm so pleased to meet you, Sasha. Um, you too. If ever you need help with anything, if there's anything I may do um, to assist you, you know, are you on Facebook? I'm not on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. Are you on Twitter? I'm not on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. Okay. Was, if you want to find me, that's how to find me. Okay. Maybe email or something. We can. I'm sure the organizers can help us get in touch tell me too but but count me in if ever there's anything i may i may be to assist you excellent wonderful thank you this no, was really great i'm sure you'd do it for me if i were to ask yes i would and i'm just happy to be able to be of service i'm concerned because my computer is giving me a message it's gonna die so hopefully i won't disappear <laughs> um but yeah thank you for for just giving this thank you to the people who gave us this platform and um, absolutely, I agree. I'm here now that I've spoken out. I'm ready. I'm ready to fight. So, I'm, I'm, and I'm ready to stand right next to you, sis. Great. Be well. Stay Be well. Safe. You too. Thank you. All right. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye bye.